Now that your iGrow organization has been established and your printer is unboxed, calibrated, and loaded with materials, you are ready to start your first print shop. In this video, we'll show you how this is done with both online and offline iGrow. Since there are a lot of similarities between the two, I recommend you offline iGrow users watch this whole video. To reiterate, iGrow is Mark Ford's slicing software. Slicers serving as the middleman software communicating between your CAD package and the printer itself. Slicers work with 3D file formats such as STL, OBJ, and or 3MF. So to get started, we need to open our part in CAD and export it out into Iger's accepted format, which is STL. The process of exporting your part into this file type is largely universal across all CAD programs. Here you can see the process in SOLIDWORKS. Now before you click Save, I recommend opening the Options window in File Explorer. Here you can modify some tessellation settings for a finer or coarser model. If your model, for instance, has lots of curvature, you should aim for finer resolution to avoid your curved surfaces from appearing jagged and angular, but note that finer resolution results in a larger file size. It is recommended to keep your STL files below 20 megabytes to avoid excessive storage consumption on your computer and slowing performance in Iger. I provided some tessellation settings provided by Mark Forge that will help you save your STL files efficiently. Once you are satisfied, click OK and Save. Next, let's log into Online Iger via our internet browser, preferably Google Chrome. Upon entering, we are presented with your library where your files and folders are stored. Most 3D printer slicers simply exist to convert 3D models into G-code files for 3D printers to read. However, Iger also serves as cloud-based inventory for your 3D printed parts, which are available to you and your permitted users anywhere and at any time. To import your STL file, click Import STL in the upper right corner. We are presented with a window with some options. If you have a print settings configuration established, you can select that from the configuration dropdown, though I always opt for default. Then select a destination folder if you have already created some folders. Otherwise, it will save your part to the library route. Note you can always move these later. The blue box in the center is where we can either drag our STL file into or click to open File Explorer and select your STL from there. There's your part in the middle of the screen. If you hover over a face, it will highlight in blue. Click on any face to position that face onto the build platform. Now over on the right we have some basic controls. General, Settings, and Infill. If your part does not appear on the screen, don't worry, I'll show you how to fix this in a moment. The view we are currently in is called the Part View. General is where we can choose Printing Materials, Base, and Reinforcement, along with your printer type. If needed, you can also rotate the model on the build platform by clicking on Manual Rotation. Settings is where you will spend the least amount of time. The layer height is really the only commonly adjusted setting. Smaller layer heights will result in better surface finish, but at the cost of longer print times. If your part is geometrically simple without too many fine features, I recommend just raising the layer height. Note that if printing with fiber, layer height is fixed based on the fiber you chose. Oh, and for those whose parts are not appearing on screen, try changing the original units over to Imperial. With frequent use of your printer, you can start playing with the ancillary toggles listed at the bottom. Finally, there's infill. There are four options listed here. Fill pattern is the sparse infill inside the part, designed to create an internal lattice to give it structure without consuming excess material. The fill density gauges how empty you want the part's internals. 
Roof and floor layers are the number of layers above and below the infill. And lastly, the wall layers serve as the walls around the infill. It's all pretty intuitive stuff here. MarkForge engineers spent years optimizing these values to produce the fastest, strongest, most accurate, and visually aesthetic parts. Nine times out of ten, I never change these from their defaults listed here. At this point, you can start to see that MarkForged is all about ease of use and print success. In fact, if you change certain settings, or if the part is too build for the build platform, Iger will always warn you or generate an error. It wants you only to succeed. At this point, we can click Save down here in the bottom right. What you'll notice is that over on the left, the Part Details pane now has some information displayed. The part, print time, and the cost of materials are really useful for determining when to start a print job and for comparing costs against other manufacturing methods. With our part saved, let's jump into X-ray view located to the right of part view. Here we can view the material pathing on each layer, check support material placement, and the routing of fiber reinforcement. If you enter 2D mode, you can view the material pathing. Use the timeline at the bottom to cycle through the layers as well as to create overrides. These overrides can be accessed in the top right. The dropdown includes the options of adding supports, removing supports, adding and removing fiber, and inserting a print pause, which is typically used in applications requiring embedded hardware. No matter how simple the geometry, I always check a part's x-ray view just to be safe. At this point, you probably have a lot of questions regarding fiber placement strategies and when you can get away with removing supports. All of these questions and much more can be answered in the Mark Forge University online courses. These courses are great. I was amazed at how comprehensive and consolidated they are. I wish I had this when I started learning 3D printing. I mean, it took me years to acquire all that information through tons of internet sources. You can access Mark Furge University under the three-line menu and follow the instructions to confirm your email and get started. With everything looking good here, click Print in the lower right. Here we are presented with the Build view. This is where you have the option to add duplicates or other parts to the build platform as long as the print materials and layer heights all match. If your printer has been registered and is connected, you will see it listed in the dropdown. If you have not yet registered your printer, check out our Creating an Iger Organization video in this series. If you wish to print via a FAT32 formatted USB flash drive, click Export Build. The .mfp file that is downloaded contains all the encrypted G-code instructions. Load this onto the root of your flash drive and insert it into the printer. The USB symbol will appear at the top of the printer screen, then print from storage. For sending the job through the printer remotely, select the printer from the drop-down and you will be able to see the remaining filament and fiber along with an option to add the job to the print queue or to print now. And that's it! Now that the slicing process for online Iger has been covered, let's briefly discuss this process for offline Iger. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are loads of similarities between the two, so I'm going to go over some of the nuances. If you haven't yet downloaded Offline Iger, see our Creating Your Iger Organization video in this series. When you open Offline Iger, you will be presented with a screen that looks very similar to the library homepage in Online Iger. For first-time users, you will need to select or create a folder in File Explorer to save Iger's part and build files. Iger's part files are .mfso and the build files are .mfpb. Once your folder is selected or created, you can import your STL file. A word of warning though, if you would rather select a pre-existing folder instead of creating one, do not select a parent folder with tons of subfolders. This will majorly slow down offline Iger. 
Now, starting at this point, you're going to see a lot of similarities to what we saw with online Iger. The process through part view and x-ray view is identical to what we just saw in online Iger. Even the interfaces look the exact same. All the buttons are there, the overrides, 2D mode versus 3D mode, all the settings. This is all very familiar to what we saw earlier in the video. When you click print, you will likely only see an option for export build unless your printer and computer are connected via LAN. Recall that exporting the build means saving an encrypted .mfp file to a flash drive. Done. That's all you need to know to get started. Happy printing.